J'ai fini la loi. I finished the law and it only took me a day. Not bad. I wish I could say that my reaction after reading the law was super exciting and that I felt really passionate after it, but I didn't. If only you could see my face after I closed this book last night. I was like, WTF, what did I just read? I pretty much had that like little processing image just floating through my mind and I was like, I just need a second. Cause it was just a lot to think about and it was nothing that I ever envisioned. Based on what I've heard about this book before, I was expecting the law to be a super easy, quick read, just something that you pick up and you finish within a couple of hours, but it wasn't that at all. I realized that I bought the British Economist translation version. So my version used words that were not really common to our language today. The writing style was very difficult for me to get through. I actually had to read this book aloud to myself for most of the time in order to truly understand what I was reading. After reading this version, I went over to the Foundation for Economic Education and on their website, they have a free version of the law and it's translated in American English. So pretty much our modern day speech and it was much, much easier to understand. So after reading this, I ended up pretty much reading it a second time on the FEE website. And I definitely understood it a lot better. And I ended up liking the book a lot better and having more of an appreciation for it than I did before. The law was published in 1850. So mind you, in 1848, there was a revolution in France and France was becoming increasingly socialist. And Bastiat actually wrote this book a few months before he died of tuberculosis at the age of 49. And he knew that he was dying while writing this book. There's actually proof. He wrote about his lungs specifically in one of the lines of the law. So basically, long story short, here's the law in a nutshell. God gives us rights, the right to life, liberty, and property. Laws are supposed to protect those rights and allow us to defend our rights ourselves. Law has turned into something that actually takes away our rights through plunder. There are a lot of legislators and dictators in this world who are able to support their ideas of why they should be taking our rights away through plunder and why they should have power over us. But in the end, liberty wins. I really connected with one particular part in this book and it talks about a confusion of terms. I could really relate to this passage because a lot of people talk about libertarians in this way. Socialism, like the ancient ideas from which it springs, confuses the distinction between government and society. As a result of this, every time we object to a thing being done by government, the socialists conclude that we object to its being done at all. We disapprove of state education. Then the socialists say that we are opposed to any education. We object to a state religion. Then the socialists say that we want no religion at all. We object to a state enforced equality. Then they say that we are against equality and so on and so on. It is as if the socialists were to accuse us of not wanting persons to eat because we do not want the state to raise grain. This is incredibly relatable. Sound familiar? And here's a great question to ask your socialist friends. If the natural tendencies of mankind are so bad that it is not safe to permit people to be free, how is it that the tendencies of these organizers are always good? Do not the legislators and their appointed agents also belong to the human race? Or do they believe that they themselves are made of a finer clay than the rest of mankind? People are people. And you know what? Government is made up of people. Put pretty simply, socialists fear liberty. I hope you enjoyed my video today. Please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, be free.